9 a month. Kelly Chevrolet has a truck for you. Kelly Chevrolet, 500 East State, just over the bridge. Are you an athlete if you only play for bragging rights? What if your team is now your family? Are you an athlete if your toughest competition is yourself? Or if you inherit your uniform? What if you don't play sports at all anymore? Are you an athlete? Always. Russell Athletic for the long run. Dear Brian, since you're at Park View, Mom says I have to write you every day, so here it goes. I cut my leg open today at recess. The school nurse put some stuff on it that bubbled up like alien blood. It's too bad you can't get better just as fast as I did. Believe it or not, I do love you and miss you. P.S. The house smells a lot better since you've been gone. Parkview. Providing intensive care for children. Providing nurses to neighborhood schools. That's powerful medicine. Steve Rappaport, NBC 33 Sports, weeknights. Good morning. Friends and family are remembering the students killed in the bonfire collapse at Texas A&M. This as questions are resurfacing about the safety of the annual bonfire today, Sunday, November 21st, 1999. From NBC News, this is Today with Soledad O'Brien. And joining Soledad is Sarah James, live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Good morning, I'm Sarah James. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today. I'm Soledad O'Brien. In fact, Sarah, several memorial services will be held today. It's, it's such a horrible event for such a close-knit community. It's going to be a very difficult day, Soledad. Well, also coming up this morning, the crash of Egypt Air 990. We'll have new details on the Egyptian expert sent over to examine the cockpit voice recorder. And we'll talk about what reportedly was going on, not on the tape. Also, there's important medical news for people who suffer from osteoarthritis. We'll tell you about promising new treatments and ways to prevent this crippling disease. Soledad? Well, Sarah, our Foods of the Century series continues with a look back to the 50s. Americans liked Ike, but they also loved eating TV dinners while watching Ozzy and Harriet. And then Pierce Brosnan has climbed back into the tux and his alter ego, James Bond, this time. The world is not enough. We're going to talk with him and his co-star, the new Bond girl, Denise Richards. And when we're talking about what's enough and what's not enough, how about bigger and better? We're going to head down to Miami for a tour of the biggest cruise ship ever built. It has its own zip code, Soledad. It also has a skating rink, and it can accommodate more than 3,800 passengers. Absolutely enormous. Yeah, it is. And before we get to all of that, we want to go over to get a first check of the morning's news with WNBC's Maurice Dubois. Good morning, Maurice. Good morning, Sarah and Soledad, and good morning to you, everyone. More questions are being raised today about the safety of the bonfire tradition at Texas A&M University. This is family members and friends will attend services today for some of the 12 people killed on Thursday. NBC's Jim Cummins has more. Texas A&M is still in shock. Flags are at half staff. Condolence signs are everywhere. The football stadium is empty. Most of the students decided to go home at the last minute this weekend. Many of those who stayed come down to the makeshift memorial at the fence around the logs that collapsed Thursday morning, crushing 12 students to death. Lanny Hayes is among the injured still hospitalized. He suffered a broken ankle, but ponders a much greater loss. It's really hard right now. I mean, a lot of what happened, I guess I'm still in shock because a lot of it hasn't set in completely yet. Um, three of my close friends from my dorm passed away. Saturday, the first funeral for Nathan West, a sophomore majoring in oceanography, a former Eagle Scout from a close-knit family in Houston. His dream was to be an Aggie. And an Aggie he became, and he was an Aggie, if you will, as they say, to the core. Despite Nathan's death, his family hopes the bonfire tradition at A&M continues. Jim Cummins, NBC News, College Station, Texas. In New Mexico, 13-year-old Araceli Tena, who was shot in the lobby of her school on Friday, has died. She was shot by a classmate who claims he was trying to kill himself, but accidentally shot the girl when he was bumped by other students. 
The investigation into the crash of Egypt Air Flight 990 is widening. Officials from the National Transportation Safety Board are in Cairo today, apparently to inspect Egypt Air's maintenance operation. Meantime, two Saudi American men on board an America West flight say they were discriminated against. The pilots said they were acting strangely, evacuated the plane, and had them detained. NBC's John Palmer has this story. The two passengers, both students from Saudi Arabia, are demanding a full investigation, saying their ordeal may have been triggered by what was termed cultural and religious misinformation related to the crash of Egypt Air Flight 990. We are just victims of, of how we look and where, where we come from. The incident began Friday afternoon during a stopover in Columbus, Ohio, on a flight to Washington, D.C. An American West pilot, who had become suspicious of the two, radioed ahead for the plane to be met by security teams. Passengers were evacuated on the runway. The two Saudi students were handcuffed and driven away. After several hours of questioning, they were released with an apology. I'm hurt. Uh, this is the first time being handcuffed, taken in front of the people. A bomb-sniffing dog was brought in, and police said one of the men had tried to get into the cockpit. I was going to the bathroom. The flight attendant thought I was going to the, uh, to the cockpit, which is, of course, which was not uh, right. A spokesman for America West told NBC News it takes this matter very seriously, but will have no comment until interviews with the flight crews have been completed. John Palmer, NBC News, Washington. And there are still no details about exactly what prompted a highly unusual mid-air search of Air Force One on Saturday. The president is in Italy today for an international political conference. White House officials are not saying exactly what prompted the search of Mr. Clinton's plane, but indicate that it was a telephone threat. Cartoonist Charles Schultz has been diagnosed with colon cancer. The cancer was discovered last week when the 76-year-old Schultz underwent uh, emergency surgery to clear a blocked abdominal artery. The future of his popular Peanuts comics...